Have any of you been tempted by the many variations of toned paper? I was at Michael's recently and I picked up this pad of Strathmore toned blue mixed media paper because I thought it would be really fun to try this out on camera with you guys. I was personally looking for toned gray and had no such luck. I could only find the sketch version and I wanted the mixed media version. So I ended up picking up this pad instead and I thought we could try it out, see how it works in case any of you are considering trying this out for yourselves. And we can also just see what the tone looks like and how the paper performs. It says on the front that it is vellum surface and this is part of the 400 series and I assume this is really similar to the Strathmore toned tan mixed media paper which I already own but I think we should just go ahead and get straight to trying this out. Before we actually get to creating any artwork let's just go ahead and take a look at the paper itself and this is going to be under my lighting but we're going to hope that it still comes out on camera. Okay, so on camera, it looks a bit gray. In person, it actually looks a bit green, and it's got all those pesky hairs on it, just like the tone tan. Do you guys see those, those pesky hairs? I'm pretty sure that's because it's made of some type of, like, post-consumer recyclable material, or something like that, but if you guys have seen my video on toned tan paper that I made quite a while ago, you'll remember me complaining about all these little hairs. I spent some time looking for something that I would like to draw and try out on this paper, and I went with a reference image that had a lot of yellow and orange to provide a really nice contrast on top of the slightly greenish, grayish, bluish paper, which I won't even really say it's very blue to be honest, it's a bit more green to me. So we're really going to just test out how these colors pop out on top. So what should we even use for this, you guys? Well, I guess you can't answer the question because in reality, I'm just talking to myself right now, but you know, we're just acting like I'm talking to you guys. Eventually this message will get to you guys, but you won't be able to answer for me. So I guess I'll have to make this decision myself. The luminance does not have a huge range of like uh, yellow, orange, bright colors. The polychromos does have a nice range, but you know what I was thinking? I have an idea. The Karen Dash Pablos, definitely the most aesthetic looking color chart. I still need to redo these other two when I create review videos for them. But the Karen Dash Pablos, a lot of people have asked me my opinions on these pencils. I haven't used them very much. I said I was going to use them again. So you know what? They have a nice range of yellows and oranges. Let's go ahead and just use that for this video. All right, I think I'm all ready to get started here. I've got my tray of yellows and oranges. I've got my black and my white pencil. There's actually two blacks in the Pablo's ivory black and the normal black. And I think I'm gonna try to actually like trace out the image because one thing I remember about toned paper is when you try to erase it, sometimes that messes with the paper a bit and lifts up some of whatever the fiber is or something like that so i've got my kneaded eraser in case we need to do any erasing but just of course we're going to sketch with the white pencil and i figured out pretty quickly that i wasn't going to be able to trace on this paper but that's okay i definitely like practicing my freehanding skills even though it scares me a little because i don't want to mess up any expensive papers but for this paper and for this sketch in particular I didn't have to worry too much because it was pretty simple. It is just a flower with a butterfly, so it didn't really need to be quite as accurate in proportion since flowers move a lot and you don't have to have everything completely perfect. There's a lot of irregular shapes with flowers, luckily. And I pulled out all my oranges and reds and yellows from my Pablo set, which by the way, I should make a video on the Karen Dash Pablos because I think they have a really great color range. And I love the luminance, of course, but their color range definitely suits something more specific versus the Pablos. They just have so many different colors in that set. But I'm getting a little off track here. So as you could see, I'm trying to like offset this grayish undertone that the paper is giving me because I don't want it to show through. And I 
have to admit I was a little surprised at how much I had to build up in order to make the colors really pop off the page. Now this could just be the pencils, but it probably also has to do with the paper. I remember Strathmore Tone Tan Paper having a similar issue. I decided to use the Pablos because they're pretty opaque in comparison to like Faber-Castell Polychromos for example, where you have to build up the layers because they're a bit translucent at first. And I thought that the color range for the Pablos was well suited for this type of artwork as well. But unlike the Prismacolor, the Pablos do keep a pretty firm point, so they work really well for details too. I have to say though, it was a little bit hard for me to fill in all of the space because I wasn't using that toned gray, green, blue, whatever you want to call it, honestly. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think it looks like to you, but I'll just say toned blue since it's the name of the paper, I guess. But I didn't want any of that toned blue to show up in the petals, of course, because that doesn't work for the mid-tone, so I just wanted it to be in the background and therefore I had to make sure to build up those petals and the butterfly completely to get rid of any of that so that it doesn't show through at all. And definitely that required a, a bit more pressure on my part. I was putting more pencil pressure down trying to fill in the spaces and make sure that I don't miss anything and that I'm not working too lightly which is a difference in how I normally work with white paper. So I definitely work differently when I'm using a toned paper, I've noticed. If you are trying to experiment a bit and you want to see how your pencils would look on a different paper besides white, I encourage you to try one of these, whether it's a toned tan, gray, or the blue, because I think it really is fun to work slightly differently and with a different technique in mind. It really changes things up if you're used to doing pencil work and if you get a little bit bored with using the same processes all the time. If anything, I might say that this flower might have turned out a little bit too smooth, but that's okay. I actually wanted the petals to have a nice soft look to them, and I wanted the butterfly to have a bit more detail because the butterfly was meant to be the main focus anyways. You guys will see what I mean as this progresses. Also, having both black and ivory black was a bit confusing because I know it's slightly different looking at my color chart, but I ended up kind of just using them interchangeably because there was a lot of black for the butterfly. I decided for the butterfly it would be best for me to first go in and do all those black details. Oh, and you'll see me trying to make a TikTok throughout this too, which is pretty funny, but I'm not very good at TikTok and I thought maybe it would be fun to start posting my artwork on there. Anyways, <laughs> I had some difficulties trying to remember to film little clips throughout. But as you could see, I'm using that black to fill in all those little details of the butterfly before I go in with the main color afterwards. And I found this to be a pretty good technique because that way I would have like a map of where all the patterns are. And these pencils are really great for detail work as I mentioned before you guys. So that is another great reason why I chose to use them for this artwork in particular. But anyways, I think I'd like to talk a bit about the positives and negatives of, the, of this paper as we are kind of finishing up the artwork. Okay, so some of the positives I can think of right off the bat are that you're able to get a nice smooth texture if you would like to, but it's still uh, toothy enough where you can build up layers as well. You're able to get detail in and also cover large areas. I also think it's a unique tone to have, but it isn't quite blue, I would say, and I don't think it's even showing up like that on camera, so I'm pretty sure you guys could see that as well. It's not exactly what I would call toned blue paper, but it does provide a nice kind of grayish undertone to whatever artwork you are creating. So I think this is a little bit different than what I was expecting, but I still enjoyed using it. One thing I don't like is the weird hairy texture that the toned tan, and I'm assuming toned gray by Strathmore, also has. And it's kind of like the fibers of the paper, so I'm not sure if it has to do with it being recycled paper or something like that, which I don't mind at all, of course, but it's a little bit of a weird texture that none of my other paper has. So if you're not used to it, you're probably just going to be a little bit 
like put off by it at first, but I got used to it as I was working on this artwork. And also it takes a little bit to build up the color on top and it takes a few layers to do that. Not just with the Pablos, but I've used other colored pencils on toned tan paper before by Strathmore and had the same sort of thing happen where I wasn't feeling like the colors were showing up as bright as they should right away. Oh my gosh, there I am trying to make the TikTok again. And this part was a little bit difficult. I was trying to create all of the little antennas and legs of the butterfly and I wanted them to be nice and thin and look realistic, but I also had to go on top of some of those areas that I'd already put a lot of layers down. I didn't have too much of an issue, I just pressed hard and I was able to get the result that I wanted. Another thing worth mentioning is somebody in my comment section from another video told me that this paper didn't pass their home light fast test and it actually faded a bit when they had it against a window. So I think that is something worth mentioning. I usually put my artwork in a portfolio, but if you're planning on selling artwork, maybe this isn't the best paper to use for artwork you're going to sell, unless of course you just plan to make prints of it or something like that. But I know that any drawings I do on this paper will probably just end up in a folder of my portfolio anyways, so I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue for me, but if you think it might be an issue for you, that is something to consider as well. And oh my gosh, I had so much fun creating that butterfly, you guys. It's so gorgeous, and these pencils work so well for detail work as well as just filling in areas. So. They're really great pencils to use for something like this, and I had a really fun time doing this. That all being said, I'm not quite sure I was happy with the tone of the paper with this particular drawing, and maybe I should have picked something else. Next time that I use this in a video, I'll probably try to create a blue artwork to see if it brings out any of the blue in the paper, and then we could really put it to the test, I suppose. But I wasn't super satisfied with this, so you'll see that I end up Adding a little bit to the background, I didn't want to create a whole fleshed out background because I wanted the focus to still stay on the butterfly, and I didn't have too much time to create an entire background either, but you'll see that I start to go in with some green because I thought green might work against this tone, and I kind of just added a couple of shadows around the flower just to add some more contrast and make it a little bit more interesting since I didn't fill up too much of the paper with this drawing. And it's not to say that I wouldn't go back and work on this a little longer, but I always tell myself that I'll do that and I never end up actually doing it. And once I put it away, it usually stays away. So let me know if you guys think I should work more on this or if I should just leave it as it is with a little bit of hints of a background, but just kind of leave it against the toned paper as I meant it to be. All right, you guys, here's my finished artwork. Something very annoying is that there's actually fingerprints, if you guys could see that. They're pretty obvious, and they're not created by my hands having anything on them in particular, but I guess my hand resting on the paper for too long ended up leaving fingerprints, so let that be a fair warning to you guys to use like a sheet of wax paper or something to protect the paper from your hand because this paper shows fingerprints very clearly apparently so that's a little bit annoying but as you could see other than that the artwork turned out pretty good I thought that this was a fun little experiment to do I thought that especially the whites and super light colors stood out a lot on this paper and if you like the particular tone of this paper I would urge you to give it a try and see if you like it it's definitely not super blue, so if you're expecting something that's more blue, you're going to probably be disappointed. But overall, it was fun to try this out. See, in the cover art, it looks a little bit more cool toned and definitely not as green. So if you're expecting that, you definitely should go to the store and see if you could find this paper before you buy it. Actually take a look at the inside of the sketch pad or the pad of paper before you actually buy it because you might be a little surprised at what you're going to get. So that's it for today's video you guys. I hope that you enjoyed and that maybe this was helpful and fun for you guys to watch and as always I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for bearing with my slightly 
sick voice still and hopefully I will be able to get back on track with my video schedule soon enough. Alright, thanks for watching. As always, bye!